Hi there. This video is part of my What on Earth Wednesday series of videos that don't usually come out on a Wednesday, but are aimed squarely at people just getting into modeling and perhaps more specifically 3D printing and are looking at Blender to do it. The aim here is to explain and sometimes demonstrate Blender concepts and features that more experienced users forget that beginners might not know. First, we want to know what a vertex is and perhaps also if you have more than one of them, they're called vertices. So let's have a look at this cube. Oh, we can't. I burnt it. Oh, well, let's make another one. Okay, there we have a new cube. Very nice. Okay, if I select this cube and then go into edit mode, with tab, and then deselect everything with all A, now these black dots are the vertices. This is a vertex, and this is a vertex, and these are vertices. And you can see that the vertexes, or the vertices, are connected with a straight line, with an edge, and these edges all go together to make a face. That, in a nutshell, is what vertices are. They make up your entire model. Okay, so now we know what a vertex is. What's a vertex group? Unsurprisingly, it's a group of vertices that you have selected and you give a name to. Why you might want to do this is not immediately obvious, but we'll get into that. Okay, vertex groups live in this little green triangle thing here in the properties panel. This is the properties panel. And if I select it up here, you can see vertex groups. There's lots of other things here too, but they don't concern us for now. This is the vertex groups, and this is where we will create them. Okay, so perhaps the best way to explain why you'd use vertex groups is for an example. Now, I'll go back into object mode. And we'll delete this cube. Let's consider this model. She's wearing this low polygon thing around here, which you could consider to be a dress. In fact, with cloth simulation, this could make a very nice dress, actually. But anyway, we'll take this as an example. The simplest example of using a vertex group is to give a group of vertices a name. For example, let's take this dress and go into edit mode. Let's say I want to select all these vertices. So, Alt and click. And these ones, Shift, Alt and click. And let's say we want this to be a hem. Now, if I go into the vertex properties tab here, and I press this plus sign, we'll create a new group. This is a vertex group, but it doesn't have anything in it. There's nothing assigned to it. Now you don't have to, but it's worth renaming it. And I shall rename this hem. There we go. This is still just an empty vertex group. And it will stop being an empty vertex group when we press assign. Now this will assign the selected vertices to the group M. Now deselect all the vertices with Alt and A. Then the vertices go and I can carry on modeling with this dress, selecting other vertices and what have you and doing whatever I want to do. Then when I want to come to work on the hem, I can go to my vertex groups, select this group hem, which is the only one here, so it's already selected, and press select and it will select that group of vertices again. Now I can add other vertices to this at any time. Let's say I want to do up the top here as well. I select that ring and that ring and assign. You'll see that if I clear everything and then press select again, it has both of them in there. Alternatively, I can select these at the top and remove. It's all an A, press select. That's only got the ones at the bottom. Actually, it's also got the ones around there, but that's because we didn't delete those. But that's okay. And we can delete this group just by pressing minus. Everything's still selected, but we don't have the group anymore. However, a more common use for vertex groups is for changing the way modifiers work or at least changing the areas for which modifiers work. Let me try and explain this. 
this dress probably would want to stick much closer to the body than this one is. And to do that, you would normally use a shrink wrap modifier. So let's do that. Select the dress, go into the modifiers property tab. I have a cloth modifier on this dress, but we're not using it here. Add a modifier, shrink wrap. The way you'd use the shrink wrap modifier is to use this little pipette under the target here. Select the object you wish to shrink wrap to. In this case, it will be Antonia. And whoa, you see how this doesn't look right. I can even change the offset of the shrink wrap here so that you can see it's actually attached to every part of the model. And that's not really what we want. I should take this shrink wrap modifier off. Well, at least I should disable this modifier for a moment. If only there were a way to just make these vertices stick to the model with the shrink wrap modifier. Well, lucky for us, there is. If I select these two loops up here, and we'll create a vertex group of them. Into the vertex properties tab, group, add, I'll call this belt. We assign. Now, it's very easy to forget to assign, so I tend to Alt A and then just select just to make sure that it has been assigned. And it has. Okay, let's try our shrink wrap modifier again. We go into object mode, we tab, we go to the modifiers properties tab. I'll enable again the shrink wrap modifier, and you can see it does the nasty stuff we did before. But down here at the bottom, you have the vertex groups here. And if you click in there, it will list the vertex groups it knows about. And we've only got one. So let's select that one. And now you can see it's only affected the part of the dress which has the vertices in our vertex group. I can change this modifier a little bit. Do what I want. So there you go. That's a very common use for vertex groups. We'll have one more example, which I think is a useful example. I will turn Antonia off. I'll turn on this funny shape down here and select it. Now, if you look at this kind of boat shape, if I remove the top faces by going into edit mode and going to face mode, selecting the two faces, pressing X, and face it, you can see that it has very, very, very thin walls. A typical thing you would do to resolve this is to add a solidify modifier. So let's do that. In object mode, go to modifiers, add a solidify modifier. So far it looks good. Let's increase the thickness. Immediately something wrong here. And you can see how it starts poking through the edges of the model here because we have very thick walls. And there's just not enough room for them here. So how are we going to solve this with vertex group? Okay, we go into edit mode and go into vertex mode, which is this little box up here. If you don't know, vertex, edges, faces. We want vertex. And there they are. So we select these four. And we'll make a vertex group of them. Over here, add, change the name, pointy bit, assign, and then go back into object mode. And if we go to our modifiers, solidify, this also has a vertex group option down here. And if I click in it, I have my pointy bit group there. I will select that. Now, the strange thing about that is we've selected the pointy bit, but it's actually removed the, the solidifying on the rest of it. You really want to invert this vertex group. We've selected these points, but we really want these points selected. Fortunately, there's a way to do that with this little button over here. It inverts 
which part of the model the vertex groups affect. Do that. Now look, we have thick bits over there and thin bits over the, over here. And we can adjust this factor here to get it exactly right. Again, if we push it, it would do the same thing. But this at least gives us the control to have a proper model. So there you go. There's a vertex group for the solidify modifier as well. Sounds a little bit more complicated, but it's not really. And the point here was to learn about vertex groups. There are lots of other uses for vertex groups in Blender, but we're not going to cover them here. Suffice to know that a vertex group is just a group of vertices. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions or anything like that, just use the comment section below. So far, I've answered every comment, I believe. So please feel free to put comments down in the comment section below. Also, please subscribe if you can. I would be doing more of these videos focused on just concepts and ideas, things that when I was learning, I didn't know what they were. So I hope this was useful. Please let me know in the comments below. And hopefully I'll see you next time.